Um, I'd like to start by thanking the, the organizers of, of these events. This is such an important thing that we, we are doing, bringing the knowledge base of universities to bear on policymakers. Um, but my presentation is talking about when things go wrong, when the knowledge base is ignored. So let me read, to start with, my formal abstract for this, this presentation. Given the economic and social cost of autism in our community, it is imperative that the government is correctly informed about effective treatment options. This presentation describes how a science with proven effectiveness for helping children with autism has been demonized and marginalized in our community. The consequence is that government policy has been misguided and parents are denied access to skills that could help them and their children. At the same time, there is evidence that professionals at both universities in Northern Ireland who offer training in this science have experienced obstacles preventing them from sharing their expertise. At the heart of this issue is a culture of misinformation that is propped up by gatekeepers who refuse to countenance the possibility that their limited understanding of this science is undermining the integrity of government institutions and that they're doing a terrible disservice to families devastated by the diagnosis of autism. The science in question is applied behavior analysis, better known by its acronym as ABA. So I'm going to talk about the perceptions of this science and how it's gotten wrong in Northern Ireland. Here is a, a standard visual illusion, and you're asked to ask, or which of these two squares is the lightest, or is the brightest? Most people will argue quite vehemently that B is lighter than A. And that's fine, until you realize that they're exactly the same brightness. So if you printed them out on a piece of paper, they're exactly the same color. Now, there's a simple lesson from that. It is possible to be deluded. As human beings, we are open to being deluded. Now, let's look at an example of delusion in relation to a science. In the Northern Ireland Task Report on Autism, you'll find this statement. Local professionals who work with such young children suggest to task group members that they would have grave reservations about being involved in subjecting such young children to such an intense behavioural programme for fear of causing some kind of psychological damage. So this is in a government-sponsored report. If you know nothing about this science, I dare say you would be very wary of anything to do with it. Okay? Now, attempts were made on numerous occasions to have the information on applied behavior analysis corrected in this government report, all of which failed. And there's no supporting evidence to justify this assertion. So this is quite a serious indictment of the quality of the information that's reached in government ministers. Parents will tell you this is nonsense. Okay? But it exists and you'll find it pervading much of the, the understanding of applied behavioural analysis within government. Here's a different perspective on applied behavioural analysis. And this is by an author in America who wrote a famous book called Let Me Hear Your Voice. She's a parent of a child with autism. She started to understand what it was, not some dehumanising control of people through a cynical manipulation of rewards and punishments, but rather the light of scientific exploration brought to pair upon behaviour and upon learning. Quite a different perspective. Now, when a government minister is relying on advisors, it's understandable that it's going to be difficult to choose between so many different interventions. And parents often find this when they go onto the web. There's so many interventions, which one do I choose? And what we find is that ABA is placed in here along with a range of interventions. And we will find this statement, if you look through any statements from all of the education ministers, all of the health ministers, ABA is described as one of many interventions for children with autism. A consequence of classifying it in this way is a statement like this which appears fairly reasonable. 
Interventions should be child-centered rather than method-centered. Should address the unit room. You read that for yourself. And do not promote one type of intervention over another. This seems reasonable. But let's look at what ABA really is. When you look at the science of behavior analysis, you'll find it's split out the, the philosophy of the science, real world applications, and laboratory research called experimental analysis of behavior. Applied behavior analysis is located there. It's not an intervention for autism. It's an applied science. Now that's a huge implication. Here's a quotation from a past president of the Association for Behavior Analysis International. Although there are several journals devoted to the science of behavior analysis, the two primary journals are the Journal of the Experimental Analysis of Behavior and the Journal of Applied Behavior Analysis. Both are highly rigorous journals with strong citation indices. But all of this is well established fact, and what surprises me is that any educated person would question it. So we're saying then that our Minister for Education is not properly educated. Not her fault, not his fault. Each of the ones that come up with these statements have been misinformed. But that raises certain serious ethical questions. Now, this mistake is called a classic category mistake in philosophy. So we're looking at competence of the advisors. Now, I'm a fellow of the British Psychological Society. And in the code of practice, you'll find these statements. You should practice within the boundaries of your competence, and you should engage in continued professional development. Uh, I wrote some time ago to the Institute of Physics in Ireland to see what their response would be to people operating outside of the area of competence. And they said, as a general rule in matters concerning physics, the Institute of Physics in Ireland would seek to have appropriately qualified physicists represented on any review panel which might be reporting on findings from physics. Seems reasonable. Until you see this. Psychologists and other government advisors in the UK are not trained to any extent in applied behaviour analysis. A large section of the Northern Ireland Task Group report on autism was given over to talking about ABA and getting it wrong. And despite complaints, the mistakes were never corrected. So the government has seriously misrepresented ABA because ABA professors have been excluded. You've heard Corolla saying about the universities being excluded from participating. Up until now, ABA professionals have been excluded from participating. We have been blocked from meeting education ministers and health ministers from advising them about this serious issue. When we look at standards of training in applied behaviour analysis, this is uh, applied behaviour, you need a degree, coursework 270 hours, supervised experience 1500 hours, this is from the Behavior Analysis Certification Board, which is an international body. Okay? And those standards apply worldwide. We provide this level of training at our universities. And why does it matter? Well, whenever you look at goal standards and treatment, when you look at professionals talking about evidence base for one treatment versus another, if ABA is categorized as an intervention rather than as a science, you get it judged by this standard here. So the results from these kinds of experiments influence policy decisions. And then we have an influential education psychologist here, writing, giving science a bad name. Whenever, unless you do this, you're not doing good science. However, if you, learn, if you look through the, the kinds of research that behavioral analysts do, you'll find Textbooks upon textbooks on what's called single case research design methodology. How science can be done without using randomized control trials. How science can be done using individuals. So this suggests to me that the BPS ethical code of continued professional development needs to be looked at again in terms of the training of professionals who are promoting one method of science over another. So when we look at randomized control trials again, let me give you an example of the implications of that.
Don't use parachutes because there are no randomized control trials. Okay? And it is often said there are no randomized control trials in applied behavior analysis. But you don't use randomized control trials to assess the science. There are no randomized control trials in clinical psychology, education psychology, speech therapy, occupation therapy. It doesn't make sense to assess it that way. Don't use those disciplines because there are no RCTs. This is the nonsense that's been perpetuated in Northern Ireland. When you look at working with individuals, this is a brief summary of the types of things that one would, that one would do. We use the scientific method to meet the needs of the individual. We select the behavior to be analyzed. That's not controversial. I hope not. You measure the behavior. That's not controversial. You select the treatment strategies. That's not controversial. You implement the treatment strategies, and then you evaluate the outcomes. Of course, there's lots more in between here, but those are the essential ingredients. The dominant perspective in Northern Ireland is that ABA is controversial. However, the term controversial should be reserved for the consequences of demonizing a science. That's the issue. The word demonizing is attached to the wrong problem. Don't do that. Why? It is method driven. So using the scientific method is a problem? That can't be right. It is not child-centered. What? That's about single case designs. People are trained in adapting their methods to meet the needs of the individual rather than groups. Doesn't address the unique needs of each child. I think that's sort of covered here as well. And ABA is only one of a number of interventions, which is patently incorrect. When we look at the support for applied behavior analysis worldwide, mostly in the States, I've got a number of these uh, on video. You can look at these over again. I, I want to move on fairly fast through them, so I'll put them up. Surgeon General, some years ago, just 45 years ago now, at the time he said, 30 years of research demonstrated the efficacy of applied behavioral methods in reducing inappropriate behavior and increasing communication, learning and appropriate social behaviors. Current opinion in, the psych in the psychiatry and pediatrics. Again, my handout contains these, but if you're looking at this in the video, you can stop and take a look through those. The Supreme Court in British Columbia it is beyond debate that the appropriate treatment is ABA or early intensive behavioral intervention. Then we have the National Standards Project in 2009, the largest review ever conducted. The overwhelming majority of interventions were developed in the behavioral literature. We also have two other nice examples, the Office of Personnel Management. They now sufficient evidence to categorize ABA as medically necessary rather than purely educational. And then the 60,000 member, uh, members of the American Academy of Pediatrics also endorses ABA. And as Cole has shown you, 45 states, and my handout uh, said 44, so one has been added since, we, since I last wrote that. That means on 47 separate occasions, reviews were conducted and it was concluded there was sufficient evidence to warrant the introduction of a new law. And the people who were reviewing the evidence were familiar with applied behaviour analysis, not like the people in the UK. And why do I say that? They're not trained in it. And here's a lovely example of the problems caused by not being trained in a science that you're reviewing. The guidelines from NICE said there's no evidence to support ABA. If anybody is interested, they can write to me. I have here printed 28 pages of peer-reviewed journal articles showing the effectiveness of applied behavior analysis for the treatment of autism. 28 pages. And this is what's happening. And I have lodged a complaint to the president of the BPS about panel members who are not trained in applied behavior analysis, going back to that comment from the Institute of Physics. There should be people in a science to review the material on a science involved in any of these, these programs. So that's the academics, but what about the parents? How do they feel? 
Our daughter was diagnosed with autism around the age of three, and um, suspected from about the age of a year and a half. I remember when ABA was first mentioned to me by family members, I didn't know an awful lot about it. I'd only heard all the negative myths about it from the schools I worked in. Um, and I suppose I kept putting my hand up saying no, I'm not, don't want to go near that. Um, I've heard nothing but negative things about it. So eventually I gave in and decided, look, sure I'll meet, I'll meet these people in a way and see what they have to offer. Um, and I suppose from a mother's point of view, I can safely say it was one of the best things I ever did. Um, I don't know where Kira would be if it wasn't for ABA. I don't know why there's still the myths that there is about ABA because Kira has had to learn every single thing, whether it's academic ability or whether it's life skills or the simplest thing from sitting down in a seat to going to the toilet to going out in a crowd um, has all come from ABA and uh, to think that um, that ABA might not be given to parents or provided to parents or available in this country would just shatter me because without it I don't know where Kira would be. Kira is able to function in mainstream school using the ABA program. She's able to take part in plays, assemblies. She's come on leaps and bounds with her number work, um, her reading, etc. Um, and none of that, none of it would have happened without ABA. Um, the girls that have come down um, They've come down regularly, they've built up relationships with Kira. They don't just deliver the ABA programme, they're very supportive to the families, they're very supportive to Kira. This m myth of ABA punishing children and making children do things that they don't want to do is just quite frankly absolute rubbish. Um, Kira is a has to be highly motivated um, and can lack a lot of motivation and ABA definitely encourages her along those lines. Um, she would say for Kira gives you a flavour and you can download and play those video clips from those links that have been provided. So I thank the parents for making those available. Some years ago, given the circumstances in Northern Ireland where ABA had been demonised, is demonised, uh, what do you do whenever you know what the science can produce? Well, I set up the first charity in Northern Ireland to help parents learn the science. And this was the first book that we wrote with parents that was published in Europe, Teaching Parents Applied Behaviour Analysis. It's since been translated in Japanese and German and the Greek translation currently underway. This book was given to all the members of the Northern Ireland Task Group Report on Autism who produced that report. It isn't even referenced. Um, so this charity has been in existence for over 20 years, um, sees about 500 parents and gives them more than autism awareness, gives them practical skills. You heard that parent talk about the things that she's been taught. That means that the statutory authorities weren't teaching her those things. It took a charity where they, the professionals who trained the master's level training often are standing on street corners with buckets making collections for their wages to help teach these parents. And these, this charity is doing what the Surgeon General in the States recommended. This charity is doing what each of those 45 states is recommending for parents. This charity, working with myself and, and Corolla at the universities, uh, and Stephen Gallagher, the, the, the uh, director of the master's course, produced a multimedia training tutorial on applied behaviour analysis with help from the Leonardo Lifelong Learning Programme and the National Lottery. It's been translated into eight languages. In May, er, May early June, uh, Corolla and I will be travelling back to, the, to Prague for the launch of the Czech version. And I'm currently in discussion with Quebec because the French Canadians want a French translation. So this is happening in Northern Ireland. We're exporting our expertise 
but we are being continually ignored by local government officials who don't want to talk to us. Now, the person who set up the Peach Charity has received numerous awards for the work that he's been doing. And he's listed in the University of Ulster Directory of Experts for his work in autism. Now, this is where we should be bringing science into politics, but we now get politics coming into science. In terms of the committee members, the committee sought nominations from the various agencies, including both universities in Northern Ireland, who, who uh, work in this area. Queen's University Belfast no, was no, nominated Carola Dillenberger, who coordinates the Masters and the, the MSCS and ASD. And it so happens that the only person on the Austria University's directory was a Professor Keenan. So, who was helping parents in Northern Ireland and has done a lot of work internationally. He was not nominated to sit on the committee. His exclusion was due to an intervention by the Department of Health out of consideration for what was said to be the views of the chairperson of Northern Ireland's uh, autism charity, Autism NI, as outlined by an email correspondence obtained by parents under the Freedom of Information Act. The key phrase here, I was hoping, this is to the Pro Vice Chancellor of Research at the University, I was hoping that I could have a quiet word with you, any chance of you nominating an individual whom the chairperson of Autism and I would very much welcome, as you can guess, as well as ourselves. As Cole said, the, none of the university uh, programs are involved in the, uh, the Autism Strategy or Autism Action Plan. A charity, uh, a parent from Autism and I circulated a petition some, year, or some weeks ago. Nearly 3,000 people worldwide. Autism and I refused to sign it. And simply requesting parents be given the choice of ABA. Um, this chairperson of Autism and I was asked by students on one of our master's courses if she would give a presentation explaining why uh, she didn't want to sign this, because the students want to know what's the problem, because given they're learning about ABA, uh, she declined. When the course director uh, approached her and asked her to perhaps reconsider, given that she was non reductive of the university, a complaint was made against them for asking her again. So we have problems. Here we have Evan Putz, the health minister, and we have Laurie Unum, she was the Vice President of State Government Affairs. She's a law professor and a parent of children with autism. All the stuff happening in the States, she made happen. She drove that. Yet, there are no minutes of that meeting. One would have thought, given the issues involved, would, some minutes would have been very beneficial to help make decisions. So to conclude then, when illusion transforms into prejudice, implications are there for policy. So basic definition, a prejudice is a prejudgment, a preconceived belief, opinion or judgment made without ascertaining the facts of a case. Institutional discrimination refers to unequal treatment that is entrenched in basic social institutions, resulting in, dis in advantaging one group over another. So we have serious issues. Thank you. Thank you.